tonight uh, had a bit of a different game plan. Uh, how did you see that work for, with the starting lineup, essentially, and, and what did you think was the biggest factor to building a lead so quickly? I just think our attention to detail in terms of transition defense. I think I can't remember who it was asked me before the game. is One thing that we need to really lock in on was our transition defense. Um, we met as a staff yesterday, and that was the biggest thing that stood out. And then also, like, just... Even before that, just coming with the energy, the effort, the urgency. Every possession, you know, we played on our toes, not on our heels. Uh, we were great in transition, great on the ball and pick and roll. We wanted to make an adjustment to keep Desmond Bain out of it. Continue to push uh, Morant to his right hand. And, and blitzing uh, Bain, you know, they have some high-level IQ, high-IQ basketball players over there. so. Guys have to be aware. They have to be early in their spots, early, ready to rotate, ready to cover for one another, and we were able to do that. Our defense fueled everything else. You know, it was a huge defensive night for us, especially in the first half. And uh, coming out having a really good third quarter also helped. Um, found something, kind of milked it, our angle pick and roll. Dela was phenomenal. Um, Brian, A, A basically dominated the game defensively with his block shots, rebounds. Um, and then our pace. We played with great pace offensively. So it was a great team win. Um, and we're thankful, you know, going from starting 0 and 5, 2 and 10, everything we went through, all the ups and downs. You know, I just knew it. We just stayed at it. Staff, my staff, I can't thank them enough. Um, just the energy they brought every day. And getting to this point, obviously, Rob, the the different moves we made at the deadline, you know, really trying to fortify our team and balance it out. I think it was huge. And um, the guys, they, they enjoy playing with one another. They really support one another. The, the energy in the building, the energy in the locker room is phenomenal. Um, it was just great. But, you know, salute to the Memphis Grizzlies. They're not going anywhere. They're going to be around for years to come. They've gone through some challenging moments during the season. And I just – Told Taylor, I love him. He's a hell of a coach, hell of a staff. Um, and he, he's managed. He's, he's been the leader that they need. And, um, you know, they'll, they'll heal up and get healthier this summer and probably make some moves. And But they'll be at the top of the food chain for, for, for years to come. Just big picture, does beating Memphis the way that you did, uh, number two seed, does that crystallize a certain amount of confidence as you now move forward? No, I told him after the game, you know, we set a standard for ourselves defensively on what, how we have to play and what we have to do on the defensive side of the ball. You know, as long as we stay organized, you know, we, again, we stay disciplined, stay organized and not turn the ball over. We got a bunch of guys that can put up a lot of points in that locker room. We're going to find ways to score. But our, our, the thing we have to hang our hat on is our defense. And, you know, on the ball, off the ball, gang rebound, and we did all of that tonight. And, uh, you know, this thing is just getting started. You know, we, we, we passed level one. You know, Brian had a great, great, you know, batch of words, some wisdom that he shared with the group after the game. You know, we, we surpassed level one, and now, you know, we got to start shifting our focus. Whoever comes out of that game on Sunday, we got to start uh, shifting our focus and really understanding that it's about us just as much as it's about, it's about our opponent. We have to be the best versions of ourselves when we prepare to step into the round two. Darvin, I know you were here quite a while ago on a, as an assistant coach on this staff, but you, have, like, you haven't seen a, a home playoff crowd like this in, in a while, just since you've been here. I noticed Jack Nicholson was back today. Yes. How, much, how much does being at home, having the home crowd experience a game like this mean to your team? It's huge, man. To give the city something to cheer for, um, and, and particularly the Laker fans, Laker Nation, inside, outside the building, all over the world. It's, it's, it was great. You know, you could just feel that energy. You know, when we, when we were on our, making our run, getting stops, hitting threes, like it was just like the building was shaking with, with, with roaring and, and, and just guys never heard, let's go Lakers so loud. Defense, like our crowd is behind us, man, 1,000%. And again, we just have to do our part, give them something to get on the other team about, give us something, give them something to scream loudly about, and uh, I thought we did that today, and they were phenomenal. They were excellent. 
Darvin, uh, AD had 26 blocks uh, across the six games. Got chance for, from the crowd tonight for saving the the ball near the bench. Like, what what did you see from him to, defensively, and just how special of a series did he have on that end? Just a focus, you know. Just a focus. Just talking to he and he and Brian um, after Game Five. You could see that 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 that, that switch had come on already. You know, we weren't ourselves down there for that game. Um, really look, looked a little gassed. So, but having said that, those guys, when we came back, got back, talked through, via text. Um, it was it was one of those things where you knew, you know, you felt the vibe. And then when we showed up to the gym today, we had a, a team film session, basically looking at some of the stuff that went on in Game Five. You know, did our walkthrough. Then we went through the normal process of the pregame film and so on and so forth, but you could just tell right away. You know, I got here probably about 3.10. Brian was already here, and, and A was in here shortly after. Um, just that focus, that focus, those guys being ready to go, and can't say enough about those two. Brian's leadership, AD, you know, wanting to be elite, telling me verbally he's going to be elite defensively this, this, this series. So we just got to have keep stacking. You know, as we get to the next opponent, we got to have the same thing again. I, like I told him, we set a standard for ourselves defensively, and uh, we got to carry through on that. Darvin, sticking with that theme of defense and with AD, it, it felt like this may have been like some of the best rim protection that we've seen all season. Just what did you see out of, of him on, on the low post and really keeping the Grizzlies kind of out of those spots? Just, you know, we came out with an aggressive mindset, wanting to continuously push Ja to his right hand, and, you know, we had to mix up the coverages, you know, against Ja, we're pushing him to his right hand and A had to be up against Bain. You know, we was going to send him to the screen, go over the screen and force him into a blitz, a double team. So he was he was the main catalyst. He and Brian talking, talking to people, talking to through Dennis, Austin, uh, Van Do, the communication was at elite an elite level. And um, that side of the ball is going to get you places. If you're consistent and you play at that level on that side of the ball, it's going to get you places and get you to you know, the destination that that's at the end of your journey. And AD, he has to be that for us to do what we want to do and what we're trying to do. He has to be that that anchor for us. Darvin, obviously you don't know the next opponent. So how do you guys approach these next few days before you play on Tuesday? And how do you scout not knowing which team you're going to face? Well, tomorrow, um, everybody will just get away from it. You know, spend time with the family or do whatever your favorite hobby is. Take a walk by the beach or whatever you need to do. And then uh, we'll recalibrate. Uh, the staff and I will get together on Sunday, watch the game. And whoever comes out, I mean, we've already been working behind the scenes. Um, you don't want to wait till you get to this point and then start the preparation process. We've already been doing that. Uh, so whoever comes out on top will be ready to go. Hey, Darvin, how, how would you compare what LeBron's energy level looked like tonight compared to game five, and what do you think went into being able to make that quick turnaround? I mean, just us, you know, we took, when we got back early Thursday morning, I think it was like 1.30 maybe, 1.50, I, don't, I can't remember exactly, but it was after 1 a.m. for sure. Uh, we just took that Thursday off. The staff and I got together. We went through game five, you know, saw what adjustments we wanted to make. Um, matchups, uh, rotations, we went through all of that. Uh, Friday morning was just an optional shoot where we made coaches available for an hour. If guys wanted to come in, great. Guys came in, certain guys didn't touch the court, just got treatment. And then we, we, we met over here, a pregame walkthrough at 4.30. And so uh, I think that time between, you know, he's, he's probably the best I've seen or been around in terms of what he has to do to recover uh, his prep preparatory process in terms of what he does for his body, the snapback, especially after all of the years that he's logged, all of the games, all of the postseason runs, finals runs, um, playing in the summer for the Olympic team, world champion, whatever. Um, he's the master at that. And uh, he just, he and Mike Mencius put their, their heads together and Magic Mike took care of business, and, and Brian did everything that he always does and to make himself available and not just available, available at an, an elite level. 
Darvin, uh, staying on LeBron, if I have the details of your resume correctly, I think you were around 38 when you were assistant coach on the Lakers. Yeah. Not starring on the on the Lakers. Right. To see him finish off that first half run that he had with the two-handed reverse on oh, the yeah. break, can you just put some context to how remarkable that is? It's to unreal, see man. I'm telling you, man, it's unreal. Like, you know, Kobe was nothing short of amazing. You know, Giannis, you know, I've, I've been around some top tier, elite top five in the NBA talent, but Bron, man, it's just, I've, I've never seen anything like it. For him to sustain that all these years, again, that's what they should teach. They talk about how he approaches the game and he playing the game the right way on both sides of the ball, never cheating the game. Well, in that never cheating the game section, they need to talk about more so for these young kids and young athletes in general, how he takes care of his body. Everything is regimented, his routine is on point, not just during the season, but year round. That's the only way he's able to do what you see him doing. And uh, again, it's nothing short of amazing, but when you're around him every day, you see how he prepares, it doesn't surprise you. Thanks, Coach.